Hello and welcome to the video. My name is Cam Ward and today we're going to be breaking down a short little fashion commercial I shot recently for RTH London. Now, it was a very run and gun style shoot. There was no client there. Um, obviously, we were in lockdown in the UK, so we had to keep everything very minimal. There was just me, the photographer, and two of the models. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the gear I used and also the style in which I shot it. Then we're gonna run through the edit, and then we're gonna have a quick look at the color grading. Now, grab yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, whatever, whatever your preference is. And um, yeah, I'm gonna run the video now. It's only 30 seconds. Throughout the video, I'm gonna be showing you some kind of extra footage which didn't make the cut. There's some great footage in there, I think, that didn't make the cut, but you know, it is what it is, isn't it? That's our job as editors and whatnot. So yeah. Just to get going on this one, a few people have asked me how I land jobs like this. And obviously this is a different scenario because it's a very small, minimal job list, pretty much no budget. But in general, the way I've always landed work is just generally through word of mouth and being consistent, just working with clients over a long period of time. This job came to me through a photographer, Kuik Photos, who I also shot the Golden Child project with. We shot the Golden Child just for fun. And then it's actually led to more work leading from that. And that's generally how things have worked out for me. Collaborating with good people, meeting good people, and you know, don't be a dick is I think the general consensus in this industry is just, yeah, just get along with people, help each other out. Hopefully it'll come back around and help you out at some point as well. Now, I think the key takeaway from this video is getting good models. Work with Natalie Phillips and uh, CJ. These guys are great models. When you get a good model, it's like using a good actor. You know, they'll just give you that extra something. And if you're ever on a shoot and a client will say, oh, I just know um, my friend um, will wear the clothes. You're not gonna get good results out of them. There's a reason modeling is a profession and acting is a profession. Using professionals will help you get a better shoot and a better end product. So don't skim on the models. Let's get into the good stuff, the cameras and the shooting style. Anyway, for this shoot, as usual, I use the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K with the Metabones XL Speed Booster, the Canon 2470 f2.8, and the Lauer 9mm f2.8 lens. I also used a variable ND filter. It was a cheap one off Amazon that I got years ago. I've been using it for years and it's been totally fine. I know there's a bit of color shift in some of them, but I've not really noticed it. And when I have, I've just created it back out anyway. And I also use the Promist Half filter. Also on the Blackmagic, I'm using the small rig full cage. As mentioned before, I like to keep the rig as minimal as possible. This is literally how I was using the camera on the day. You've got to use the cage, I believe, to balance it on the DJI Ronin S, which is my gimbal of choice. It works perfectly fine on that gimbal, as you can see from the footage. Dead easy to balance, it wasn't an issue at all. The compression I shot at was five to one. Burned through storage, I probably shot about 180 gigs worth of footage, which is a little bit excessive, but you can't argue with the quality, can you, I suppose? So with the gear out of the way, let's get into some of the other stuff, the style, the style of the shoot and how I wanted to shoot it. Now we shot in Manchester in the UK and we shot on top, like on a rooftop location so you could see a lot of the city in the background. I just think that helps build in production value. It makes the shoot look more expensive. At the end of the day, you want it to look expensive. You want it to look like an advert that you've seen on TV. TV. found that the Lauer 9mm lens, it just gives it a bit more of a commercial look, opening that lens up wider. In the past, I used to shoot a lot tighter, and whilst that can look great as well, it's just this year specifically, I wanted to shoot more wide angle stuff and just experiment a little bit more. On the day, it was like a little bit cloudy, a little bit sunny, but on the whole, the sun was diffusing a lot of that um, harshness that we were getting. So it allowed me to get some of those softer skin tones. Often, if you're shooting outdoors in harsh sunlight, you'll wanna have someone with a bit of diffusion just above 
the talent just to diffuse the skin tones and make them look a bit softer. But in this case, I didn't really need to. And again, it was very run and gun. Now, a lot of people have been commenting and asking like how I achieve a fast, sharp edit style sometimes. And a lot of that is done just through the shoot. Being able to shoot and edit your own content allows you to keep a consistent visual style throughout. And it allows you to build in almost like the look, like you should know what the edit should look like whilst you're shooting. And that will really help you on the shoot itself. A lot of the tricks and stuff that I use are just things like snap zooms or you know, whip pans, and I'll just do them on the day because I really don't like to use a lot of presets anymore. I think a lot of them are overused and sometimes you see one and you're like, oh, I know where that's come from. I've seen it a hundred times. Like, don't get me wrong, they're great in certain situations, but you don't really need to use them. It can save you time as well by doing them on the day practically. I'd say 90 to 95% of this shoot was all done handheld. I think using a gimbal can make it look pretty professional and commercial, but handheld can give you that raw edge as well. It looks pretty cool, a bit edgy. Finding that balance is really important. So moving on, that brings us to the edit. Now, as always with my content, I wanted it to have a short kind of sharp style to it, trimming the fat keep that energy high, get rid of any excess and, and keep it um, tight and consistent. So as mentioned, I wanted to kind of get the balance right between using wide angle shots and close ups. So for me, I use the wide angle shots generally for branding product shots and just kind of showing off the space that we're in and using the close up shots to kind of create character and a little bit more mood and some of that edgy style. We're using this video to show off kind of the product itself, but also what the brand is, the character, the personality behind the brand. And you know, they want it to be cool, edgy, modern, fun, all the buzzwords. But yeah, this is the part of the video, which it's not a sponsored bit, but I am now an Artlist affiliate. But finding that music for the job is always critical. I've been using Artlist for a good couple of years now because they just offer a whole wide variety of different music, tons of different music on there. Um, and you can use it in anything. So you can use it in like your commercial stuff. You can use it for YouTube stuff. Um, that's why I love Artlist and it's normally the first place I go to to find music. But I do have a referral link if you are interested in signing up, you get two extra months free. I use them anyway, so you might be wondering how I did some of these effects. I don't really know what you could, just like a spit like a duplicate effect. All I did was duplicate the base layer and then keyframe it to be a slightly lower opacity and scale it up a little bit. Just, I just did that one or two times here and there and it just created this kind of like duplicate um, a little bit of like a hologram effect. No plugins required for that one. Okay, so let's jump into the color grading. So for me, the starting point is generally color correcting the footage. And then after that, I'll apply a Rec 709 LUT. In this case, I'm using the P4K2 Alexa LUT. I'll leave a link to all this stuff in the description below. But then I'm also using a custom LUT, uh, the Yacht Party LUT. It is available to buy on my website. I keep the price nice and low. If you want to help me out, then um, be sure to go check them out. Hopefully they help you out as well. So yeah, as you can see, it's pretty punchy. As you can see here on the left, I kept it in the Gen 4 color space. Just prefer it as a starting point. I think it's just preference to be honest. I don't really know if there's much benefit from using Gen 5. I'm going to explore it a little bit more in the future. The thing I really want to accentuate here was the bold punchy colors, the Yacht Party look. I built this lot specifically just to give me some of these bolder, stronger colors. I only have it on 60% because that's what I found worked for me in this case. Yeah, to be honest, on the day, Everything looked great. The cloud cover was giving us some of those softer skin tones that I wanted anyway. The skies were very punchy. There was a lot of color. And then we also moved over towards kind of golden hour in the afternoon anyway. So it all comes back to again, just kind of trying to achieve the look you want on the day or shooting at the right times of the day to achieve the best look and style that you're after. Throughout the video, you can see a little bit of that warp stabilizer jank. But yeah, you can also see the Promis filter blowing out some of the highlights behind him here. Um, just giving it a bit, a nice little pop. We're just having fun messing around, seeing what works. What I will do sometimes is isolate the skin tones and just bring those skin tones up a little bit using the HSL secondary um, in Premiere. And one thing I will sometimes do is apply Red Giant's Cosmo filter just to soften out the skin tones a little bit more um, if it's gonna be a close-up shot. And that's a great plugin for beauty commercials as well. But 
But yeah, that's pretty much it. Not too much to this shoot. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Let me know what else you want to see on this channel. I've got some more work coming up, some stuff which is a little bit different as well an Australia kind of travel film. If you do have any questions, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Cam Ward Film or leave me a comment below. And uh, yeah, I, I will catch you in the next one.